Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to teach you how to dribble a deck of cards. Alright, because dribble after all is a cardistry move, I'll be using Virtuoso's SS16 deck edition which is amazing they've released this one ss16 basically means uh spring summer edition 2016 and if you guys don't know who the virtuosos are they are a group of very talented people who teaches cardistry and they shoot cardis uh their cardist moves and they sell decks like this they've been selling i think there are three different variations they release one deck a year and they sell out really they like they sell really quick okay that's one thing um and um if you want to know how, learn some cardistry moves you can probably check out their website but this is not a promotional video or anything like that it's not a deck review so let's get straight to the tutorial um, in my opinion, there are two main ways of dribbling a deck of cards. Number one, you can dribble. It's basically they share the same grip, except number one means uh, the very first way is by bending your middle finger or an index finger like this and dribbling it like this. Or the ver better variation or the variation that I use is keeping the index finger flat or straighten out instead of bending it and dribbling it like so. Um, I'm not sure why people do this. I guess it still works. I guess both variations work, but I just prefer this version a lot more. Now let's get to the grip. Um, grip is quite simple. Um, what you want to do is you want to hold it in this kind of grip where your index finger is pretty much doing nothing. I'll, I'll explain what the index finger does later, but essentially your middle finger, your index finger, I mean, ring finger and your pinky finger is along the top edge of the cards like so they're not like this like a card spring they're in an angled way see how they're angled if you see the cards they're like angled like so see it's like an acute angle right there using math so basically that's what your top three fingers are going to do along the edge of the top cards uh your thumb is going to be chilling at the bottom um it's not a 90 degree angle either. You're going to be in an angle like this. And it's almost as if you're going to be um, holding by the corner. Um, for me, some people hold it by the edge, like right here, but I find it it's a lot easier to perform this if you hold it closer to the corner while holding it like this, okay? That's basically what these four fingers are doing. Now, as I said, there are two different variations. Um, variation number one, you can um, bend your index finger like so, which I don't really recommend, and I don't really know how to do this, so I'm not going to teach this way. I'm going to teach my um, the way I learned it. It's not my way. It's the way I learned it, which is having your index finger protruding out like so. So this is essentially the mechanics um while you're holding in this grip you're going to be uh riffling with your thumb one card at a top at a time you know how you can by holding a mechanics grip you can riffle down like this on the side see like how what i'm doing it, essentially you're doing the same thing except with your right hand in a different angle okay if that makes sense you're going to be riffling one card at a time like so and um, to help with this, the reason why your index finger is not on the top like this as well is because if you don't have your, if you don't use your index finger, it is impossible to bend your cards like so because um, you need to bend your cards in order to riffle down, right? If you are riffling down, you have your index finger like this to bend the cards like so and then riffle down, right? That's the same idea. You need your index finger right here to bend the cards a tiny bit and then riffle down. At the start, it's going to feel really awkward. I get it. That's how I felt at the same time as well. But over time, it's going to come in, uh, it's going to come and then it's going to feel very natural. So um, there are t three different positions. You can have your index finger near the top, middle, or the bottom. It all depends on how long your index finger is, but for me, I have it closer to the bottom than to the top because I guess I have small hand. I have a small hand. So, that's what 
you're going to be doing. And then where you get pressure is, um, so like you see how you have a joint right here, that joint will be pushing down, which will create pressure by bending the cards like so. And also at the same time, your thumb will be pulling the cards up, which will help with the pressure. And keep in mind, you're not in a grip where it's like this. Your, main, uh, your top fingers right here should be barely protruding from the top. And your thumb can be protruding out as much as you want, but I recommend doing the same thing. It shouldn't be protruding too much, okay? So basically that's the basic idea and the grip. And while you're holding in this grip and you're giving it some pressure, you're basically going to be riffling one card at a time, like this, like so, okay? And one thing that you have to remember is that your the card is going to leave from your thumb first, not your middle finger or middle finger, index finger, and your pinky. The cards will be leaving from your thumb first. So that basically means when you give pressure, this card is going to come off contact first, like so, and then it's going to drop. Okay, again, it's going to come off contact from this thumb first and then drop. That's what's happening because if I don't even know if you can do the other way around where your index finger, like the card from your index, I mean, middle finger comes off first, but you get the idea. You want the bottom card, bottom section of the card come off first. See how if I go like this or like that, the bottom card always comes off first and then it's the top end of the card. See? It's always the bottom first. So instead of dropping cards, let's actually have a demonstration. If you get that, if you understand what I'm doing, this is what's going to happen. Now let's talk about some positioning of your left hand. Um, what you want to do is at the start, you want to have, you want to spread your hand as large as possible so you don't drop cards, right? If you have small, like do that, some cards are going to drop. It's kind of obvious. So you want to spread your hand as big as you can. And um, some tips is that you are going to try to drop the cards in a way so that if you catch it, you're going to be in a mechanics grip right away. Okay. So that's your aim when you drop your cards. See how I can actually go into mechanics grip right away. Now let's get into the mechanics itself. Um, after getting the grips down and riffling down cards down, um, you're going to be giving pressure with this joint right here, as well as your thumb, which will create pressure and it will drop cards one by one. And it's not this, this is not dribbling. Like uh, the camera can't see that, but this is not dribbling, okay? That is not dribbling because you're simply dropping one card at a time. Dribbling is making the cards look go in a fluent motion like so Be, uh, and the way you do it is by giving a certain amount of pressure if you give too much pressure the cards are going to jump out too quickly and then cards are going to go everywhere like i don't know how i control that and if you give too little pressure it's going to look as if you're dropping cards so you have to get the right amount of pressure and it's different for everyone so if you get the pressure down and the grip and the positioning down, you should be able to um, dribble like a pro. And then here's another tip from, from myself. While you're dribbling like so, what my, look what my thumb does, okay? See, see what, did you see, did you catch that? It's gonna go like that. So it's gonna start almost in a vertical position, but as you dribble along, it's gonna move like so. That's what my thumb did here i'll show you again it's because while you're running out of cards um you kind of have to position your thumb from here to here so it's a lot easier to dribble all the way from the bottom to the top so again just watch my thumb again it's gonna go like this and then see how it almost goes horizontally right so if you put everything i said together and you get the positioning right, you should be able to dribble cards, making the cards look very fluently. Now, if you get that down, I'll, in, in the same video, I'll teach you how to do a dribble force. Why not? Um, let's say you're forcing the very top. Let's find the ace of spades because it looks amazing. Let's say you're forcing, look at that, this bitch. 
it looks amazing. Let's say you're forcing the ace of spades. You want it to be at the top, cut half, get a pinky break, transfer into almost a thumb break, except that you're going to be ready for a dribble, okay? It doesn't matter if you flash at the top because you're, th the chances are the spectator is not going to catch it. And if you dribble, you're automatically going to stop on the ace of spades. It, you're going to stop after the break, okay? And I think you can still pull it off with a small break, but we'll see. Yeah, see? You automatically stop at the ace of spades. So basically, that's the dribble force. So you can do be like, all right, so I have a deck of cards, and you can just do some false shuffles like this, or false cuts, and then you cut, get a pinky break, transfer that into a thumb modified thumb break because you'll be dribbling right away. And then all you do is tell them, ask them to stop, and let's say... Like, they're gonna say stop in the middle way, and then it's automatically gonna feel like you stopped unintentionally, and then you stopped on the this random card, and just, you just give it up, give it to them, and then you can do a mentalist effect, or anything like that. And once you get really good at this, you can do something called Anaconda. I still don't understand, like, I'm not good at it, I'm not a pro at this, so I'm not gonna teach this in my channel until I get better. I hope you respect my choice, but, Basically, what it is is that you're going to be while you're dribbling like this, you can actually make it look like a snake. By what I mean is that if you dribble and at the same time you're dribbling, you're if you move your hand, your upper hand up while your uh, bottom hand down, you can make it seem like uh, cards are um, going to almost form like a straight line, like so, in midair, like this. Okay, so it looks like a snake from the front. So if you dribble the other way around, they're going just to see this from the front, like a snake, almost like a snake. If you're interested, you can just check out Virtuoso. I think they have it on the first page. It just looks amazing. And the way, the reason why they can do this is because what I've taught you, you have to hold it in this grip, not this grip, this grip. Like if you see the Virtuosos, like the Cardists, they will always hold it in this grip. No one holds it in this grip. I'm telling you, they hold it in this grip. And then if you look very closely, the card comes off comes con um, off the contact from your thumb first, and then it goes like this. And that's why you are able to create this effect where they line up like so, and it looks like a snake. And at the start, um, I'm pretty sure you can make it, um, I can have, I can make it maybe 30 cent centimeters or so, like, a foot or so, but I I can't make it a meter or two meters like the virtuosos. They're just amazing at this, and I still struggle with this. But basically, you get the idea. And then if you get um, really good, you can do anaconda, and that's pretty much some applications. And I think I've covered the grip, the position, positioning, the mechanics, the pressure, all that stuff. And I gave you some tips. So that's the tutorial, guys. I don't know how well you will perform because it's an advanced move and it takes time, but just remember this. One thing you have to remember is that do not drop cards like a noob. You gotta dribble by giving some pressure. I'll see you next time. Peace. All right, for demonstration purposes, this is what it looks like from the side. You can make it small or you can make it big however you want. See how it's coming off from my thumb first and it's at, you can actually see it, right? I'm not trying to catch the cards. You can actually see it. I'm exaggerating quite a bit. And for demonstration, this is what my anaconda looks like. Simple. I'll see you later.